everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I talk about business, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle related content. For today's video, I'll be taking you guys on a little bit of a Redbubble photo journey. I'll be going around my neighborhood taking pictures of anything that I see that could be a potential Redbubble print and something I think will sell well there. I wanted to do this video today because I want to show you guys how easy it really is to take Redbubble worthy photos regardless of where you live. I know sometimes there can always be an excuse of, well, I don't have any good images to post on Redbubble, so I'm not going to start today, or I don't travel anywhere cool or picture worthy, so I don't have anything to post, but there could be a lot of gems in your own neighborhood, so keep that in mind the next time you think about what you want to post on Redbubble. I know that I haven't been able to travel as much as I would have liked to normally because of COVID. I even had to cancel a trip, so normally I would have definitely gotten a lot of Redbubble content from any travels that I've taken throughout the year. So even for myself, I wanted to kind of test this out and see what I can find in my own backyard. And I really just wanted to show you guys the complete photo process from taking the photo to editing it and then to making it Redbubble ready. So just so you guys have a little more motivation to watch this video, I'll show you guys the edited picture right now and I'll go into how I took that picture, how I found the subject that I took the picture of, and then how I edited it throughout this video so that you guys can copy that process and hopefully have great results of your own. So if you wanna see that entire process, keep watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more ways that you can become successful on Redbubble and other print sites. So now let's look at the process behind taking this picture. All right, so I'm at my first spot here, which I saw that's actually right behind where I live. So I think I'm gonna take a picture of those flowers right there. So let's get closer and get our shot. So I'm gonna try to take a couple of different angles just so I can get a wide variety of pictures. But these flowers are really pretty. Actually, I kind of like those leaves, so I'm gonna try that too. And you don't have to think about it too much here, just kind of play around with it, and then you can always crop it later or just go through them. So right now it's more so about quantity as opposed to quality. Okay, so I think that's enough for this spot. Let's find something else. So luckily I actually live pretty close to a nature trail as you can see. So I'm going to keep walking that way because more nature is going to appear soon. We're still kind of in the city area. But there's a lot of cool flowers and greenery on the side of this trail. So I'm hoping to find a lot of cool plants to take pictures of and get some good content. So I found some more cute flowers right over here. So I'm going to try to get some snaps of those. And yeah, just really test out your angles and try a bit of everything. So we've now walked over to a neighborhood which has a lot of nice flowers. I've been taking a lot of pictures of other people's lawns, so I haven't been filming that because I was kind of taking like quick snaps because they had cool flowers and greenery, so I'll show you guys those later. But I found another cool plant that I'm going to get some pictures of. So another tip that I have for you guys is to just take pictures of anything and everything you see. You might think that something doesn't look as nice as you want it to or it's not the perfect moment, but you'd be surprised by how many items that I didn't think were worth putting on Redbubble but I did anyways and they ended up getting sold. So there's something for everyone. So it's just because you don't necessarily think that a picture is perfect in your eyes, other people might love it. So we're officially back to where we started. I've taken a bunch of photos, so now I'm gonna head back in, put them on my laptop, and start editing. So now that I've taken a few photos that I think will be Redbubble worthy, I'm gonna look through them in my computer and pick the best one out of all of them and then continue the video with that one. Okay, so here's a quick overview of all of the pictures I took today. And for today's video, this one was my favorite, but I'll probably upload some of the others too. So now that I've picked my favorite image, let's get into the computer and start the editing process. So now I've opened Lightroom, which is part of the Adobe Creative Suite, and that's how I'll be editing this picture on my laptop. 
So now I'm just cropping it to get rid of that gravel that's in the background and to make sure it's just the leaves showing. Now I'll start changing some of the color aspects of it. So I've increased the exposure, the contrast a little bit, the highlights a little bit, and just playing around with all the different things you can change and just looking at the picture, seeing what looks good, seeing what embodies the vibe you wanna go for. And that's how I do it. I changed the temperature a little bit to make it cooler toned and I lowered the saturation a bit so it wouldn't be quite as bright because I'm going for a more faded look here and then I added a green effect for a more vintage look because I really like how that looks. So now I'm just saving that and exporting it. So I've already set up the correct dimensions so it's 9000 by 9000 pixels. And I've left the color as RGB because I checked on Redbubble and they said that's how they want you to upload their images. I'll also show you guys how I edit my Redbubble photos on my phone. So if you don't have any fancy editing software on your computer, don't worry. There's still a solution for you and you can still get your Redbubble pictures ready and ready to sell. So for my phone editing, I've chosen to use the Visco app. It's the one I usually use for my own photos and it always gives me good results. Here I'm just trying out some of the presets and seeing if I like any of them or if I just want to use them as my base layer. I usually do that for images, so I'm just going through them and seeing which one I like. Also, when I'm editing, I don't really have a preset framework of filters I'm going to use or how I'm going to change the color. I just go by what I see and what looks best for each image depending on the lighting and everything it was taken in. So for this image, I've chosen to use HB1 as the filter and then I'm going to go into the other editing portion and change some of the other features like the exposure. I'll also change the contrast a little bit. Same with the saturation. I'm trying to do the same things I did on the computer so that I get a very similar result to show you guys that regardless of where you edit it, you can still get very similar results. So as you can see, it's already looking pretty close to the one that I did on my laptop, which is great. So of course I have to add the grain effect. So I'm just going back and tweaking some of the things I already did. You can honestly get lost in editing photos. So at some point you just have to call it quits and stop. <laughs> so now the final part is to just crop it again like I did with the computer version and make it look like it's just the leaves and so you don't see the background. And now we can save it to our phone. So now that we've edited the picture to perfection, we have to rescale the image so that it fits all the items nicely. I'll quickly show you how I do that on my computer. So now I'm just resizing the picture I edited on my phone because that one's not the right dimensions. The one I edited in Lightroom is because I had it preset that way, but this is how you do it. You go into your tools and adjust the size. So same as before, I'm going to make the width and height 9,000 by 9,000 pixels and then the resolution 300 because I checked on Redbubble again and it wants an image that has a resolution between 200 and 300. So luckily for Max, I can just easily do that on my desktop. I don't have to go into any online software, but I'm not sure what other type of computers use for resizing their photos. So you might have to use a free online photo resizer, but they are actually pretty easy to use and easy to find. So just search up image resizer in your browser and I'm sure something will pop up. So now that you guys have seen the full process, I'm going to put the images side by side together so you can see what a difference it makes by editing it and how it can really boost your chance of selling images. I think it's important to edit any photography that you take for Redbubble because sometimes the colors can come through quite dull or it's just not the exact vibe that you would want to put on an item. So by editing it, it allows you to be more creative with it and take more control of your products. A little tip that I have for you guys in regards to editing, you can always edit your pictures in multiple different ways and post each and every one of those. So I've done a few different editing variations on some of the images in my shop. For example, I changed the color for one of my ocean pictures so that there was just like the regular version that was a bit more contrasted and then I put like a darker blue version so it's a little more mysterious and definitely a different vibe from the original. And then I also have a pink version because I thought it was cute, I liked it, and it just completely changed the original image. So personally I love all three of these and I think there's different people that will like each one more than the other and more likely to buy one over another. So that's why I think it's important to try to come up with as many variations as you can because not only does it expand your horizons of the people that might want to buy your artwork, it'll also stretch that image out for you and create more than one artwork so that it gives you more designs to upload 
and once again, more chances to sell. So if you liked watching this process of how I took a Redbubble photo from start to finish, then feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you guys have any other editing tips for your Redbubble artwork and your Redbubble uploading process. I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And I just want to say thank you again for all the support. I have officially been monetized, as you can probably see with the ads on my channel. So that is super exciting for me. I really didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. Like I said before, it's honestly a dream come true. And I can't wait to continue making videos for you guys. But for now, that's all I have. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.